Hello everybody. In this lesson, we are going to discuss and learn what is a chemical equation, what are the parts of a chemical equation, and of course, uh, how to balance a chemical equation. A chemical equation is important because in chemistry, we are going to deal with many chemical equations, okay? And in order to get proper answer or in order to get for the next step, there must be a balanced chemical equations. When your chemical equation is not balanced, unfortunately, you are going to get a wrong answer by the end. That's why knowing, okay, how to balance a chemical equation is important. So here, a chemical equation, we can say, mainly is made up by coefficient, subscript, reactant, product, and plus, that is also direction, okay? Simply, I can say, if A is going to react with B and produce C, the main part is reactant we are going to study, okay? And the products which have been formed by the end of the chemical reaction is called product, okay? Or the substance which is formed by the end of the chemical reaction is called product. And of course, this arrow, it shows this is the direction, okay? So before going to start this, we must know also what is subscript, what is coefficient, okay? Here, in the next step, I have some example to differentiate or to understand what is subscript and what is coefficient. In this example, you can see O2. O2, this 2 is the subscript of oxygen molecules. This 2, it shows the number of atoms present in oxygen molecules. This 2, it shows that there are two oxygen atoms. We can say there are two oxygen atoms, okay? And it only belongs to oxygen atom. This subscript, it only belongs to what? Oxygen atoms, okay? So here we have another example, 2NaCl. 2Na. Cl. This 2 is coefficient and it always present in front of a chemical formula, chemical compound. And this 2 is, it belongs to with all elements which is present in the compound. This 2, it shows the number of molecules. I can say there are two sodium chloride molecules. Okay. So here I would like to give one more example. For example, if I say 3H2O, this 3 is coefficient. And it shows also there are three molecules of water. But here, if I say like S8, this 8 is subscript of sulfur. And it shows that there are eight sulfur atoms, okay, in these molecules. Okay, let's go to for the next page. There are more examples. Here also, the same example also is that you can see three molecule h 2 Oh, this 3 is coefficient of this water molecule and this 2 is the coefficient of hydrogen. How about the coefficient of oxygen? It is 1. If it is 1, 1 is not, of course, right written. So according to this, for these molecules, what does it mean? This 3, it shows there are 3 molecules of water. It contains 6 hydrogen atoms and 3 oxygen atoms like this. 3H2O, it means 3 multiple 2, there are 6 hydrogen atoms, and 3 multiple 1, there are 3 oxygen atoms. Now we have another example. In these molecules, you can see there is a mistake, of course, it is supposed to be 2, not 3. Two molecules, molecules of iron 2 oxide contains, we can see, 4 iron atoms. Okay, 2 multiple 2 is 4 and 6 oxygen atoms. Okay, so here if I give one more example, if I say like 5SO4, so what you say? 5 is the coefficient of the sulfate molecules. Okay, we will say there are 5 molecules of sulfate. Okay, contains all have okay five sulfur atoms sulfur atoms plus okay 20 oxygens okay 
so let me let's go for the next page in the next page we have another example but here we need to be very we need to careful we need to be very careful because in this example example the subs subscript is before bracket okay before parenthesis if subscript is before parenthesis it means that this subscript it affects all the elements present in the bracket okay like what like i can say here two multiple oxygens and two multiple nitrogens okay in this case we need to be very careful there is one atom of calcium we have only plus two atoms of nitrogen as i say two it belongs to with, the, with those elements which are present in the present in the bracket and we can see three two multiple three there are six hydrogen atoms let me give another example if i say aluminium 2 in parenthesis sal as so4 3 okay so what we will say here the coefficient is one one mole molecule of aluminium sulfate contains two sulfur aluminium atoms okay how many sulfur atoms three sulfur atoms and 12 oxygen atoms okay so another example let me give you if i say five molecule okay h2o five molecule h2o it contains we will say unfortunately five molecule h2o contains five molecule water five molecule water ten hydrogen atoms and five oxygen atoms okay so for the next example for the next page my dears here let's discuss reactant and product and now i would like to give also some examples to see how a chemical balance a chemical equation is balanced okay the question is that why do we balance a chemical equations or why a chemical equation is supposed to be balanced according to law of conservation of mass you know already you study this the mass cannot be created or it cannot be destroyed it only changes from one form to another form i mean to say in a chemical equation if you have five apples there must be also five apples you cannot destroy it okay if you have two hydrogen there must be exactly two hydrogen if you have three oxygen there must be also three oxygen you cannot destroy it or you cannot okay create you can only change it from one form to another form here the formation of sodium chloride my dears you can see sodium and chlorine are called reactant those elements before arrow or on the left side of the chemical equations they are called reactant okay those elements on the right side of chemical equations they are called products okay so of course there is direction as i told you this is called direction and also here the state of each element we have to mention like what for example hydrogen plus oxygen it gives water okay so we have to indi indicate okay what is the state of hydrogen at room temperature what is the state of oxygen and what is the state of product and water okay here my dears you can see if your product your element is solid solid so you have to put small s is there any solid here i don't think so if it is gas it is written as small g so i know that hydrogen at room temperature it is gas so i have to write in bracket like small g and oxygen also gas i know and if it is liquid so we have to write okay like l so what is aqueous aqueous means when your when your elements or products are dissolved in water or in any solvent so we call it aqueous okay so you may ask how do we know that the state of elements most probably we are going to be familiar with almost all the elements which we study in the class okay for example oxygen everybody know that oxygen everybody knows that oxygen is gas at room temperature if there is iron the people or we know that the the iron is solid at room temperature if there is hydrochloric acid 
Then B model is a kind of acid and it is okay aqueous at room temperature. Okay, like this. So let me let's let's try to okay understand how a chemical equation is balanced. For a balancing a chemical equation, first of all, there are three steps. One, two, and three. The first step is we are going to write the equations with their symbols, okay? Not with their names, with their symbols, okay? And we are going to write what are the my reactant, what are the my product. After that, we are going to count each element on the left side of chemical equations. It means that what are the, your products? How many chlorines are there? How many hydrogens are there? How many oxygens are there? And we are going to also write okay what you have by the end of the chemical reactions means the number of the or the quantity of each element which is present in the product side this is product these are reactant then we are going to balance we can balance chemical equations with playing only with coefficient my dears okay playing with what coefficient we will never ever touch subscript okay you cannot touch so we can only play with coefficient you can put two you can put three you can put five you can put okay what is required to balance chemical equation we will put okay so when we write or when we put any coefficient we are going to recount all the elements and try to balance it here for example in these equations i know that there are two chlorine there are two hydrogen so by the end i have one chlorine and one hydrogen and definitely according to law of conservation of mass this chemical equation is not balanced since this chemical equation is not balanced so what i am supposed to do i am going to add or add some number some coefficients and in order to balance it so i can say here i have only okay one chlorine and one hydrogen and here i have two chlorine two hydrogen so what i am supposed to do if I put coefficient 2 in front of hydrochloric, okay, in this compound, I am going to make it balance, my dears. When I put 2, you can see, after putting 2, let's write once again the equations and recount, okay? Now I have 2 chlorine and 2 hydrogen. I have 2 chlorine and 2 hydrogen. The number of chlorines are equal, number of hydrogens are equals okay now here i would like to give some examples okay no so i i would like to give some simple ex examples like for example carbon plus oxygen it is going to give carbon dioxide and i am going to check these are my reactant these are my products okay so here I have one carbon, I have two oxygen. Here I have one carbon and I have two oxygen. So you can see number of carbons are equal, numbers of oxygen are equal and this chemical reaction is already balanced. You may not be always that much lucky because there, there might be some chemical equations, most probably they are not balanced. So you are the one who, who, who have to, you are the one who has, uh, who has to balance it. So let me give another example. Suppose if I say formation of water, when hydrogen is going to react with oxygen, it's going to produce or give water. Okay. So these are the my reactant. I can write these are the my product. Here we need to know that always hydrogen nitrogen oxygen okay chlorine so these are the elements they can never ever exist in atomic form they will always exist in molecular form this is rule in the air hydrogen does not exist as a single atomic form it always exists in molecular form Oxygen never exist, never ever exists in atomic form. It always exists in molecular form. That's why we have to write as a molecules. Then I am going to write their states. The state of oxygen already we studied in the class in the lesson in previous uh, slides. So oxygen is also gas, hydrogen is also gas, and water is liquid. You know, I will put L. Then in order to balance, what I am going to do first, I write. I write down the chemical equation. You can see I already write. 
Okay, I have already written. Then I am going to count, okay, each element. Two hydrogen, I have in the interacting sand, two oxygen. Then I have two hydrogen and I have only one oxygen. So according to the law of conservation of mass, yes, number of hydrogens are equal, but number of oxygen are not equal. So I have to make it balanced because I cannot create nor I cannot destroy it, okay? So in order to balance what I am supposed to do, we will never ever touch in subscript, I told you. So we can only play with coefficients. So if I put coefficient here, of, of course I am going to change also the number of hydrogen. So which number I should put to make oxygen equals? So definitely I am going to put the number of 2. When I put the number of 2, let me write once again. So H2 plus O2 is going to give 2H2O liquid. Okay. So let me write and uh, once again recount for hydrogen this time I have and I have two oxygen. This time I have two hydrogen and two oxygen. So number of oxygens are equal, but number of you can see the hydrogen are not equal. So what I am supposed to do? I I have four oxygens here four hydrogens here, but I have two hydrogens here. So what happened? Of course, definitely I am going to come and add the coefficient of two here to make it balance. When I put two, it will be four hydrogens. So now my chemical equation is balanced. Okay. So let me give one more example. So in in this example, I can say, okay, suppose carbon plus oxygen, it gives okay this is the like incomplete chemical equation to due to the less of air carbon monoxide okay in this situation what i have one carbon and two oxygen in the react in the product side i have one carbon and how many oxygen i have only one oxygen so carbons are equal but oxygen are not equal so what i am supposed to do definitely i am going to add coefficient two here if I had coefficient 2 here, let me write once again, okay? 1 carbon plus O2 is going to give 2CO. So once again, I am going to recount 2 carbon, 2 oxygen. Still, I have 1 carbon and 2 oxygen. So number of oxygen are equal, but carbons are not equal. What, what I can do, if I put coefficient 2, it is going to be balanced. Now let's go back to our presentations okay in our presentation I have some examples for example the formation of ammonia okay for the formation of ammonia let me do here I know that when nitrogen and hydrogen combined they, they are going to or when they react they are going to give ammonia and H3 so this is gas or aqueous also you can write same thing this is definitely gas and this is what gas okay so this is the my equation so what i am supposed to do first i will count each element in the both side two nitrogen and i have two hydrogen i have one nitrogen and i have three hydrogens so here what can I do to balance them? Definitely in order to balance nitrogens I have to put coefficient here 2. So if I put coefficient 2 I am going to write once again and recount after making any change okay and 2 plus H2 is going to give 2 and H3 then once again I am going to count 2 nitrogen six hydrogen this time I have two nitrogen and this time I have only two hydrogen so what happened number of nitrogens are equal it's okay but how about hydrogens I have two in the reactant side I have six in the product side so what I am supposed to do definitely I will come and I will add three coefficients when, when, when I add three coefficient my chemical reaction is going to be balanced now I have six hydrogens okay so in the in the questions let me check the next next 
Next one. My our next example is carbon okay methane gas is reacted with oxygen. Okay, let me do also here. So methane gas CH4 is going to react with or burn and produce always carbon dioxide and water. Okay. Here you can keep in your mind if any alkan or alkene is going to react with oxygen our product is always it will be carbon dioxide and water okay so let's try to balance it i have one carbon four hydrogen and two oxygen in product side one carbon i have two hydrogen and definitely i have one oxygen is here and two oxygen is here three oxygen so let's get start okay balancing which one hydrogen suppose if i balance the hydrogens okay because carbons are equal so what i am going to do if i put coefficient two here it's going to be balanced because i have two i have four so put coefficient two in front of water okay then let's recount ch4 plus o2 it gives co2 plus 2h2o then i am going to count now i have one carbon but i have four hydrogen and number of oxygen of course it changed now i have two hydro two oxygen from here okay two oxygen from here total i have four oxygen in the reactant side i have one carbon four hydrogen and two oxygen so what carbons are equal Hydrogens are equal and oxygen are not equal. Definitely, I am going to put two here and it will be balanced. So, my chemical equation can be balanced by putting two coefficients in front of oxygen and, of course, two coefficients in front of water. So, that's all. So, you can find many like chemical equations and you can answer. Thank you very much for watching.